And now this is where we're, we're actually going to start to get into um, um, some real uh, territory of trying to be sneaky. Because if you can't be brilliant, you can be sneaky, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh, we're going to have, oh, same contract, actually. Uh, so we're going to have South declaring 3-0 uh, no <coughs> once again. So we'll, uh, we will once again give you North, uh, the dummy up top here. And I don't, uh, some spots are X's, some spots are actually provided. Um, I don't know why some are X's and some are provided. Usually we go all or nothing, but um, if they're X's, just figure that they are irrelevant. That's not to say that the three of clubs is terribly relevant on this hand, but I gave it to you anyhow. So, okay. So you're in three no, and um, the opening lead is once again a small heart, probably fourth best. So remember when we're in no trump, we want to count our winners. How many sure winners do we have? And then where can we get other winners? We have seven. Seven. All right. So um, we have the top three hearts, right? So there's three heart tricks. Uh, one diamond. The ace of diamonds. Spades, we're going to say zero for now. We have the jack and queen. One of those cards could become a winner. So there is a potential ninth trick from the spade suit, right? And you have three sure winners in the club suit, but unless they break badly uh, and the wrong person has four to the jack where you can't pick it up, it's pretty safe to call the club suit four winners. And in fact, let's do call it four winners because three no, to have a chance, you probably need all four of your club winners, right? <laughs> And while we're on that topic, topic, uh, um, if you go about uh, when you go, when you go about playing your clubs, um, how should you play the clubs? Is there an order to it? This is just a, a little declare play aside. Okay, let's play the king. Queen by star. All right. So I would play king and queen first. Now th this is something up against. In theory, because you hold the ten nine, if if either opponent has four to the jack, in theory, you could pick it up, but you have to make a decision which way to go. So, yeah, definitely play king or queen first. Who knows, maybe the jack will drop and you have nothing to worry about. If I play the king of clubs and I see two little ones, I'll probably follow with the queen. That way, if my right-hand opponent shows out, I can finesse the ten or nine. Right? Yeah, so. Just good, you know, good, good practice to guard against. You know, sometimes you can guard against bad splits in your suits. But we are uh, going to assume that we can come to four club tricks, um, which means that you only, you only need one trick to make your three out. Now the opponents led a heart. This is actually an excellent, excellent lead for the defense. Why do I say that? They've, they've given nothing away, right? Yeah. It works great as a passive lead. It doesn't even matter if you put in your 10 and it holds the trick because they led away from the jack. Totally irrelevant, right? You have ace, king, and queen. And you have three hearts in each hand. You always have exactly three heart winners. No more, no less. When I'm defending a no trump and I have found that kind of lead, that's why I say I often really like to lead. If I don't have a good long suit, I like to lead passively against no trump. This is great. Give them one of the tricks that they're always winning that has given nothing away and make them do all the work. That's that I consider ideal against no Trump most of the time. 
if you had your choice, which suit would you have wanted the defense to lead? Spades. Spades. Okay, so why do we say that? <coughs> if the opponents lead spades, are we not guaranteed of a ninth trick now? No. Or guaranteed of a spade winner that is probably our ninth trick? All right, so notice there's a big difference here. When we have just queen and jack and no ten, it's very dangerous for us to attack the spades suit because anytime the honors are split, this is bad, right? <laughs> anytime the ace and king are in different hands, as long as people do their jobs and play second hand low, third hand high, and get the honor covered, right? If we attack spades, which you might think, well, you know, <clears throat> maybe that's what I should do. That looks like my best prospect for a ninth trick. So you lead a small spade toward the jack. Right? Well, if ace or king is over here, it gets covered. And then when you're in the dummy, you lead small towards your queen, and the other honor is over here, and it gets covered. And you don't have a 10 to get promoted. So this is not going to work. So this is, one, again, one of those situations where huge difference whether you have to break the suit yourself or the opponents break the suit for you. I would have rather seen a spade to the king and a spade back to the ace, and now we're home because they've set up our ninth trick for us. All right, well, if attacking the spade suit doesn't look like a good proposition, what are we supposed to do to try and, try and get the ninth trick? <clears throat> Remember, this is not a technical thing. There's not a, there's not a truly legitimate way to guarantee a ninth trick, right? So this is not about being a technically proficient declarer. This is about trying to get some help from your opponents. So <laughs> leave diamonds and put them on the lead? Hey, there's an idea. I like that. What is actually, what is actually probably your, your weakest suit here? It's probably diamonds, eh? You've got the ace, but you're missing king, queen, and jack and you're three diamonds opposite three diamonds. It's not like you're setting up a long suit, right? The opponents don't know that. So, now, you may try to pull this swindle and the opponents you know, won't fall for it. Maybe they'll just continue hearts. What we're hoping is that since you, if you decide to attack diamonds and dummy is weak in spades, maybe we can get them to switch to spades, right? So, what if you win the ace of hearts and dummy, and you immediately play a small diamond to your 10? Which you plan to lose, you know, you plan for one of those high honors to be on your left, jack, queen, or king. And the person on your left is thinking, well, dummy's hearts are pretty good. I don't think there's any future there. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere in hearts. Declares attacking diamonds. Maybe we need to be attacking spades. And now maybe they break the spade suit and give you some help. Or maybe they continue a heart. All right, well I suppose you could try it once more, right? I suppose you could win on dummy and play the eight of diamonds and let it ride or something like that. Desperation. <laughs> But you don't have nine tricks. What else are you supposed to do, right? Now, sometimes the opponents will catch on to what's going on here. And, you know, and, you know they, of course, what you're scared about now is they win the diamond and they just shoot back a diamond, right? <laughs> that could happen. But you didn't, again, you didn't have nine tricks anyhow. So there, there's one more piece to this hand too, and it's what we, we haven't done. Notice that I did not say to cash your club winners. Why do I not want you to cash your club winners yet? Because you're always gonna be there? 
Yeah, your your club winners aren't going anywhere. That's true, but but there's some but there's something else that I'm worried about if I start because you might think, well, you know, maybe I better start off by playing four probable club winners. Transportation. Um. Well, so we do we do still have transportation in the heart suit, so that that's not an issue, right? They don't know that you have diamonds if you play all the clubs. So if, if you play all the clubs, that if they see the king-queen from your hand, along with dummy's ace, they, they might start to think that you don't have something good in diamonds. That's true. If, if they break badly the wrong way, it, set, it sets up a, a club winner for them. But then again, if clubs break 4-1 or 5-0 the wrong way, I would say you're never making 3-0. <laughs> you can't get enough help to make 3-0. So uh, yeah, I don't worry about yeah, the, yeah. Sure. All right, so uh, so actually what I'm really concerned about here is I don't want them signaling. Oh. Oh. That's my biggest concern. <coughs> clubs are likely to break 3-2. What happens when you play the third round of clubs? <laughs> now, one, now, now one of your opponents mm -hmm. signals. And when you play the fourth round, the opponents can signal. Mm -hmm. so, one of, so one of your opponents might might discourage a spade, and then you would switch to diamonds or just continue hearts. Or they might encourage diamonds, right? No. What if the person, you know, so the person that was the opening leader, obviously they didn't have a, a great diamond suit um, because they would have let it, but what if their partner actually had like king, queen, fifth of diamonds and wanted their partner to switch to diamonds? They could signal for that, right? Whatever your signaling method is, whether you're playing standard or upside down or whatever, they can get a signal on the table. If you don't give them a discard opportunity, it's harder for them to signal. So that's why I don't want to play clubs. Hmm. So. Hmm. We're going to look at another hand before we get out. Very similar, where uh, and even more critical than on this one, where you where you have to do something early on the hand before they get a chance to signal. So. The owls over there saying, well, what if you don't signal? I don't like to signal. <laughs> then it's irrelevant, right? Yeah. I just play, I, Al says, I play the rule of thumb on defense. Whatever card is closest to my thumb, that's what I play. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> I was like, the first time, I played bridge for a long time before I ever heard of the rule, the rule of thumb. <laughs> so, uh, I think we're around the midway point, so why don't we go ahead and uh, break uh, now, before we come back to our other uh, our other cases here. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Kurt, before the day's over, are we going to talk about next term? Uh, I think we should. Yeah. Join the convention chief. We'll 